Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. Um, today's sermon is called Friends with Benefits. Um, I know it's not what you think, but before I get into the word for today, uh, let me pray. Father, I bless you and I praise you. God, I pray that this word will get into our hearts, permeate our spirit, change us. Um, redeem us if if need be rebuke us oh God I pray that you you will abide with us through this word and you will teach us to examine our friendships and relationships and I pray that you will just um, saturate us with your goodness your kindness we love you today God hide me behind the cross and let people not hear Rachel, but let them hear Jesus. Lord, it is for you I do this and for you alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, be my strength today. Amen. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, today's sermon, as I said before, is called Friends with Benefits. Now, I know what friends with benefits um, usually means but it doesn't mean that um, here it has nothing to do with sex and sleeping with your friend um, um, this friend with benefits I'm going to talk about friendships using a story from the Bible um, and principles that we can get from there so just let me get my Bible up and then today um, because the story is kind of lengthy um, I'm going to um, I'm going to actually um, get my computer to read it uh, so forgive me because it's not long but it's lengthy it's wordy I should say not lengthy um, wordy so I'm going to get my computer to read it so you'll hear a computer voice today so uh, just let me get it up here If it all cooperate with me. This story comes from Luke five verses seventeen to twenty two. It's Luke five verses 17 to 22 um oh okay so let me cue it up to read Okay, here we go. Seven one day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Eighteen some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. 19 when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of jesus 20 when jesus saw their faith he said friend your sins are forgiven 21 the pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy who can forgive sins but god alone 22 jesus knew what they were 
thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? 23. Which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? 24. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. 25. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. 26. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Yeah, so that's the story. Sorry, it's 17 to 26, not 17 to 22. Um, this story is amazing. Um, and I wanted to talk about what the true measure of a friend was, uh, is. For me, friendship, friendship does two things. Friendship does like three things. Friendship first. Friendship comforts. Friendship challenges. And friendship uh, confronts. Uh, so when I say friendship challenges, real friends, real God-given God friends are supposed to challenge you are supposed to make you better are su are supposed to um uh s when you think you can you can't do something they're supposed to be the truth and say yes you can do it you can do it don't be discouraged and real friends are not yes people they are, f they are for uh, your betterment. Real friends will tell you the truth, whether it hurts you or not. And I, and I think a lot of uh, people have yes people around them. They love you so much that they tell you all the time what you want to hear. But what we really need is friends that will come around us and be around us um, to tell us the truth and real friends comfort um, and um, when you're having a bad day or when you're when you're sick in your body they can comfort you they can they can really challenge you real friendship or real relationships are are so essential and i think that when you were talking about friend when i'm talking about friendships i'm talking about friends that god sends i'm not talking about friends that are here today and gone tomorrow and I think we really need to be aware that that not all friendships are God-sent friendships. And when they are not God-sent friendships, they can mess you up. They can destroy your life. Um, the real friendships, they stay as long as they're ordained to say, stay. Sometimes uh, friendships are not ordained to stay forever. I've heard um, people say, and I think it's true, that sometimes friendships are for a season, for a reason, for a lifetime. And any person, any friend that comes into your life needs to fall under one of those categories and a any person or any friend that comes into your life you need to ask God God what is this person here for what is this person called to do time out for the friends that just hang out with you and just tell you what you want to hear you need solid God ordained friendships you need people that will struggle with you, 
that will be in the fire with you. And every friend in your life should serve a purpose. If you have people in your life right now who are not serving a purpose, um, get them out right now. Because you have no time to just... Um, to just haphazardly go about life. You have a purpose to do. You have something that God has called you to do. And your friends are supposed to push you in that. If you, if you listen to this story carefully, these friends pushed the G as Jesus was teaching these friends pushed um, this man into the presence of Jesus. They couldn't get through any other way. They they opened the house of the they opened the roof of the house and set him to Jesus. They knew that this man, their friend, needed help. And they needed to get him to Jesus. Sometimes when you're in such a desperate situation, su such a broken place, such a distraught place, you don't know what you need. And true friends have discernment. True friends can discern what you need. They, they will say, this person needs to go to Jesus without judging they'll say it with love they'll say it with compassion but they will tell you the truth and they will and they will say it they won't pussyfoot around you they'll tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear it even if it can cost you friendship and more he's it says in Proverbs, um, better are, are, are the wounds of a friend than the hugs of an enemy or something like that. I don't think it says hugs, but it says um, than the kisses of an enemy or something like that. Because if a friend wounds you for a while, but you know they mean well, they're doing what they were called to do. And sometimes we see people go downhill. We see our friends drink themselves to death. We see our friends destroy their lives. And we're like, oh, we don't want to get involved. Get involved. If you see your friend um, going down the wrong way, if you see them um, wasting their life, and you know that God has called them for greater. Wake them up and say, brother, sister, you are called for greater. And there's a way to do that with being loving, uh, with being compassionate. Because sometimes compassionate people don't always, it, sometimes compassion doesn't always mean staying quiet and letting people do what they want to do. Sometimes c compassion means loving confrontation where you sit the person down and say, I'm worried about you. I don't want, want to see you go this way. I don't want to see you drug yourself to death. I don't want to see you sex yourself to death. I don't want to see you drink yourself to death god has called you for higher and i i love you enough to tell you the truth a lot of people don't have friends like that a lot of people have friends that will say let's party let's hang out but when it comes to to confronting them or telling them what what, uh, what's going on and what they can see in their lives. They don't say anything 
Now, I'm not saying to go around and tell and constantly be pointing out your friend's flaws. I'm saying to have discernment. Um, there's a time for everything under the heavens. So there's a time to speak up and a time to be quiet. If God is telling you this is the time to speak up and confront your friend, do it. God will have your back. And even if that person is mad for a time, eventually they'll see that you were doing it for their own good. You were doing it so they won't kill themselves to death. Um, one thing about friendship is you need to be careful who you have around you, who you let speak into your life. Um, in this world of social media, there are so many people that have so many uh, people speak into their lives, but the Lord has only ordained a faithful few. In, in this case, the man only had, I think it was four friends or a few friends carrying him to Jesus. He didn't have a whole bunch of people carrying him. And when you have, the more people you have around you is the more opinions you get. And sometimes the opinions you get are not godly opinions. So you end up pleasing people instead of pleasing God. And I look at even the life of Jesus. Um, he did have 12 disciples, 12 people that he taught, and 12 people that he, he, um, he, he learned from. But he only had really four confidants. Um, he had really four confidants, which means four people that he confided in. A lot of people feel that they need to have, they need to confide in any, everybody. You don't need to confide in everybody. I would say don't confide in any, everybody. Just use your discernment to know who to confide fight in on which level. There are several levels of friends. There are your casual friends. There are your acquaintances. There are your acquaintances. There are your casual friends. And there are your confidants. Um, your acquaintances are people that you see on a day uh, on uh, just once in a while and you talk to them you say hi hello and your relationship is very surface surface there are casual friends which are the closer relationships you they may know about basic problems with your children they may know that you are struggling with your test or they may know a bit very basic things about you. And then there are your confidants. Your confidants are people that you take into your confidence. They know very private things about you. They know your fears. They know your, they know um, very personal and private things about you. And these people, are very few. Don't have a lot of confidants because not everybody can hold what you carry. And a lot of people, I've made this mistake, you bring someone into your confidence and they can't, they can't, it's not like they're not, not nice people. It's just that they can't handle what you carry. They can't handle what you, what God has put in you. And sometimes 
you want them to handle what God has put in, in you so bad that you just ignore all his warnings and go forward and then you understand that this person can't handle it they don't have the capacity to see all of you um sometimes people make the mistake of letting everybody but you see all of them and that is not what God has ordained you are very precious your life should be filled with purpose and filled with what God wants for you you have no time to be telling everybody every personal thing of your life and but at the same time you need to let people in you need to uh, bring down, down those walls to somebody. You can't just say, oh, it's just Jesus in me. All I need is Jesus. I heard, I heard somebody, um, I think, um, uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick was doing an interview with somebody. And that person said, God, we say God will supply all our needs but he does it through people. And we need to understand what need in our lives that friend is, what godly need that friend is supplying. And we need to understand that not everybody can supply every need. So your if you have a friend that is good with business, that is a financial advisor, let's say, and you own a business, that friend may just be in there to help you with your business in a not um, professional capacity. If you have a friend, let's say if your mom, and you have a, fr have a good friend who is a parent, that friend may just be in there to help you with your kids and if you bring them money but they'll say I don't know um, I'm struggling with my money too so know what purpose each person in your life serves each friend in your life serves and only give them that what they could handle for that purpose so only give your financial friend your 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 money problems and give your mom friend your kid problems and sometimes your friends can serve more than one purpose but often it's only just a few purposes it's not everything you have to tell them different people serve different purposes and ask the Lord what purpose does this friend serve and sometimes um, we are meant to be mentors to people and not friends I know I know for myself there was one time um, this girl and I that I knew from high school she would always come come to me for advice and what happened was um when i needed advice from her uh she couldn't give it to me and i said lord why i've i've poured out my um i've let this person pour out their heart for me and then when i need them they're not there and the Lord said, Rachel, that person does not have the capacity. They need you because um, I ordained you to be in their life in that capacity. But I haven't ordained them to be in your life in that capacity. I will send other people who can handle uh, you your issues into your life 
be there for that person when they need advice, but don't expect them to do the same because it's just simply because they don't have that capacity. And sometimes we're wondering, why isn't that person there for me when I need them? Why isn't that person um, responding to my text? Um, sometimes it is just because um, they don't want to when they're users. Um, they use you and they whatever. But sometimes it's just because they don't have the capacity. You have the capacity to handle what's in their lives but they don't have the capacity to handle what's in yours. And, and the thing is, God will send you people that have the capacity to handle what's in yours um, if you just trust Him and let God lead you with your friendships. Have discernment with your friendships because sometimes you think a person is a friend but God would say no stay away from that person so we need discernment badly when it comes to our friendships I've seen too many people uh, destroyed because of bad friendships and good um, with good intentions and you know when you are destroyed by a relationship it's hard to trust again. And my last point is don't let a bad friendship uh, or a not worth uh, or a friendship that wasn't worthwhile sour you on building other friendships. God has friend, friends for a reason. We need for, we need connection. We need all kinds of connection. We need friends. We need, hus we need romantic connections, we need friend connections, we need family connections. And without any of these connections, we are lacking something. So um, I feel in my spirit that there are people listening to me right now um, that um, they've been hurt so much in friendships that they're like, I don't want friendships anymore. It's just Jesus and me, and God is saying, have discernment, but don't be afraid to open your heart. He's, he's saying, be careful, but be open. The right friends are around the corner, and don't let one bad relationship or five bad relationships sour you on that one that could be wonderful and, and um, some people have been hurt so bad that they just lock themselves away open the door to friends open the door to new relationships yes you risk getting hurt but you also risk getting the best relationship of your life Getting a relationship full of prayer, full of hope, full of peace, full of understanding, and full of love. Send us your friends, God. Send us your friends, God. So give us discernment. Give us anointed friends. Give us friends with understanding. Give us friends with wisdom. Give us friends who, who, who you can speak through. Holly Furtick said something awesome uh, the other day. Other day. He, she said some, she said sometimes God can speak through your friends. Um, he said, she said sometimes um, he, and she gave an example of she was sitting with her friends at coffee one day and they said, Holly, you should write a Bible study for the married women of our church. Um, 
to show them how to be a godly wife. And out of that Bible study came Mrs. Betterhalf that was helping millions of women become better wives. So real God-ordained friendships, God can speak to you through. Ha be intentional about your friendships. Be intentional about your friendships. Please just pray before you go into friendships. They say pray before you go into romantic relationships, but pray about your friendships and be intentional and ask God what is the strategy you're using for my friendships. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. And help me to be intentional about my friendships. Help me to keep my per uh, circle small. And Lord, help my friends to be anointed by you. In the name of Jesus. And let me let all my past hurt from friendships uh, teach me something, not stop me from building friendships that you've ordained, but let them uh, prepare me for the greater friend that you have and teach me how to be a better friend. Teach me how to be a better person. Teach me how to be a godly friend, a friend that is really discerning and full of wisdom and full of love and full of compassion in the name of jesus amen so thank you guys for listening to this sermon i love you so much take care god bless bye for a friend a friend forever if the Lord's the Lord of them, a friend will not say never, and the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know, not a lifetime is not too long to live as friends forever. Friends a friend forever, if the Lord's the Lord of them. A friend will not say never, and the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know. That a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you would see the Vegas Keeper deep in me and the fire. And the card attached one say thank you for being a friend. And tell and tell your good friends how much they mean to you. Tell the people around you, including your friends, how much they have brought to your life. Because people need to hear that every once in a while. We take our our good friends for granted. And we often talk about the bad relationships, but celebrate the good ones. Hug your friends today. Tell them you love them. Tell them you care. Tell them they're valuable to you. They need to hear it. I'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Bye.